Hey guys, uh, today we're going to have a look at installing a RGB board for the Nintendo 64. Um, this board is from etim.com.au. It came to me via, I think it's Game Connection in the UK. Um, it's a little board that goes inside. This is pretty new because the RGB amplifiers um, were NTSC for a long time. Um, and yeah, Tim's managed to to figure out a way to get it to the PAL consoles that weren't late model French models or whatever it was before. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll get started. Uh, I've got a, a desk cam for you to, to watch the process, but I won't go through too much of the basics. So the actual take apart of the console, I'll, I'll kind of uh, fast forward through. Um, there's much better videos available that go through that. But yeah, stick with me and I'll, I'll go through this. So there we go guys, uh, here's how we're looking, the, uh, you can see the floating, <laughs> the floating heat sinks, um, I put thermal paste on them previously, um, I should probably go back to using pads, um, but this model, I'm just going to take a, another video here so you guys can see, uh, this Nintendo 64 is using the DN uh, DNC NUS chip um, so it, it's a slightly different setup than some of the other chips but this uh, this is the chip that you want to oh, where the hell this is weird um, this is the chip sorry mirrored fingers uh, you want to look for when deciding what installation method to use um, the the guides themselves go through different ways of installing along this uh, this side of the chip um, and depending on the type of chip, you need to use an adapter. Um, so let me just show you that if I've got it here. There we go. So it looks like a, oh, eh, eh, it's not going to focus. I'll show you here. It's there. <laughs> so um, if you're using an older model chip, you would line this up against the end there. So let me show you again. Uh, so the older model chip, oh, the, the other model chips. Um, so this is for the, you can see there, it's, what is it, Mav? Um, they line up against this side here. But seeing as we have the, the chip that's labeled, um, we're just gonna solder directly to the, uh, to the chip itself and uh, hopefully everything goes okay. So um, yeah. So yeah, the next step uh, we're gonna do is to separate the ribbon cable that comes with it into three separate sections. Uh, so, where was it? So this side. Yeah. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Cool. So it tells you to separate uh, the cable into three fours. Um, there's 12 pins on the um, on the DN, uh, DENC chip, so this will represent all of those, and they'll connect to the little daughter board. So let's have a look if I can open it up without looking like I've never touched a piece of plastic before. There we go. Oh, so yeah, the uh, this side of it is where the pinout would go. Focus, you piece of shit. Um, so yeah, we're having a look at connecting to one of the pads on this side here. I have to get used to the like mirrored interaction with it. So yeah, bear with me. Um, yeah, cool. Um, I'm gonna get on that. I will speed things up until you know, we're at the next step.
that went a bit haywire, but um, I was trying to uh, pre-tin the, the connections. Let me show you. I think everything's looking okay at the moment. Uh, where we look in here. So there's a bunch of flux on there. But the pins themselves have a fair amount of solder on there to help them uh, help them connect. Now I'm using a, um, uh, let's see, MG Chemicals flux pen. Um, I think it's a lot easier than using like the, the waxy flux, um, but it's not as cool. You don't see the like melting and stuff. So yeah, you get to miss out. Um, we've also, it took me longer than, than I'd like to admit. We've also pre-tinned the, the cabling as well. Uh, let's see if that wants to focus, if I give it a better background. Nope. Anyway, you get the, get the point. Um, both, both need to be pre tinned just to uh, like make it easier for you. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll keep going. And once I've got these connected, I'll, I'll give you an update. Oh, that took a lot longer than it should. Um, the cabling that's supplied, uh, is like multi-core. So it's, uh, it's threads bound. Um, I think that having, uh, having it set up as, um, multi-core cabling makes it a pain in the ass, especially because you have to put pressure on the tinned cable to connect to the, the points. Um, and that just means that when you put pressure on there, the, the thread spreads out. So you have a lot of bridging. Um, it took me like three or four tries to like, until I was kind of happy with it. Um, so yeah, let me show you a little bit of what we're looking at at the moment. Focus. So yeah, uh, it's not the prettiest job. Um, I'm kind of worried that the, the blue cable is bridging to the purple cable. Um, so I'm going to have a look at trying to fix that up before I continue. But yeah, it's a pain in the dick. I would not recommend the cabling um, that's supplied with the, the connection, uh, with the kit. Um, if you're going to do this yourself, I don't know whether it is even available, but if there's single, uh, single core uh, rainbow cabling in the same fashion, I would definitely try and pick some before I tried this. Um, but yeah, I will give you an update shortly. Hey guys. <laughs> So it's uh, been a few minutes. I stopped and had lunch, um, and then when I came back, I gave uh, I gave the connections a test for the multimeter, um, and the blue connection that I was talking about was bridging. So the steps that I went through to to sort of fix that. Let's see if I can grab. Uh, go grab my phone. Show you the uh, hack job that I've done. So yeah, you can see I've, I've pulled the cables apart so that I can individually wire things up. Um, this was just a lot easier. The, the cables themselves, like I said, because they're multi-core, they're not like a single solid core. Um, they just were bridging every time you put pressure on them. And I would like, uh, I had a quick look on Amazon um, and replacement cables are pretty cheap. So if you can, I would recommend getting a single core set up before, uh, before trying this. Um, just so that it's a little bit easier to, to sort of get, get connected. Um, but yeah, now that we have this done, it, it's gross and you know, it, not, not the prettiest job in the world, but hopefully it, it, it'll work for us. Um, and we'll keep going, uh, with connecting the, the actual board up. So here's the, uh, the section, uh, eh? Eh? anyway, the center here is, um, the, the right amp so it's got uh it's marked dnc which you know that's what what we've got in this, this machine so we'll take it um we'll wire it all up so that it's set um and then yeah we'll see whether we can get it get it wired up and, and sorted that way cool Just use the drag tech uh, technique to sort of 
cover the pads on here. Um, and now if we look at ETM's sort of setup, he's saying that the 12th pin, which is the blue cable on mine, um, that's the ground. So if we have a look on here, yeah, it would just be like the bottom and I'd work my way up. Um, can't really see it, but yeah, I would work my way up through here. So um, I'll get started on doing that. Um, hopefully we can get some better lighting. Let me see if I can move the camera a little bit. Better? Kind of? Larry is shit. But yeah, we're gonna just sort of like line these up uh, and get them get them soldered on. Um, but yeah, leave it with us and we'll be back in a moment. point where we've got the board connected um, this was a little bit easier than the other side only because the cables were already separated it does look like a, a shit show um, but hey it's it's for personal use um, and it's gonna be inside of the console anyway so hopefully it won't be too noticeable um, I think that if I had the you know the inclination I would um, purchase some single core shit uh, see if that worked instead like I mentioned earlier um, let me show you a close-up view of what we're working with if I can get this thing to focus so yeah it's it's not the prettiest um, I'm just about to test it with the multimeter just to make sure there's no bridges um, and we'll, we'll go from there um, but yeah we'll, we'll keep going on um, this is definitely like a, a tutorial on how not to do this. So yeah, um, bear with me and we'll, we'll keep going. Yeah, so um, everything's, I had to re, uh, reconnect the ground there. Um, the next stage is to take four of the remaining cables and set them up for um, for the ground connections um, I might actually it says to use hmm. so like looking at ETIM's uh, steps there are two ground pins I don't know whether he if he has I can't see it but he may need you to use two ground pins from the video output um, and then he's also labeled the, if you want the, uh, you can cut the trace for the component video if you are using cheaper, cheaper cables, but I've got a pretty good, well, a pretty decent, um, SCART connection that I'm going to be using. And that shouldn't be a problem. Ground. So, oh, it's not two grounds. One is green. No, that's not right. Ground. Yeah, there is only one ground, but there's two labeled. Okay. So I'm guessing two of these will be grounds. And then we have, yeah, RGB, red, green, blue. And I'm going to use yellow, green, blue for the RGB and use the other two as grounds. 
just to keep it a little bit simpler. This was actually like one of the best purchases I made. I got it from Maplin in the UK before it closed down, but one side's a cable cutter and the other's a pair of snips. Um, it's a little bit stiff, but it cuts everything and I never need to worry about the gauge or anything. It never chops off. Well, I've never had to chop off any straight wires or anything like that. Um, it just works pretty well. Um, so yeah, if you find these like harp, harp cutters, I'd recommend them. They probably have an actual name, but. So, let's get some solder. I almost put the soldering iron in my teeth. Um, not recommended. So the first cable is this one here. It's going to go ground. <sighs> Fuck me. <laughs> Too much coffee. That's that side done. We have the board side set up. Ow. I need a better soldering iron in solution. Any uh, suggestions, let me know. So yeah, we've got the uh, our, the two grounds are, are now connected. Uh, you can't really see them, but they're the both third placed uh, connections. I'll pop a screenshot from Tim's walkthrough. Ugly as fuck, but 
it's connected. Cool, so I'll clean things up a little bit, guys. Uh, have a look at making sure everything's gonna stay connected. Um, but yeah, hopefully I'll be back shortly with the board flipped over and slightly more back together. So we have everything back together um, to a point where uh, it would hopefully power on if it's if it's all cabled correctly. Um, we've got the jumper pack in or expansion pack in this uh, in this case. So we'll plug it into the TV um, and I'll send an update from there. So we're either going to see a small fire or. <laughs> doing something. Whoa. It just, <laughs> I don't think the TV knows how to deal with it. Normally the game isn't uh, in this aspect ratio. Um, you can see there there's like a weird black bar on one side. It's doing something. <laughs> it's not, it's not quite right. Um, but yeah, let's uh, do some investigating. And we finally got there. Um, I had to put a little bit more solder on, I think it was the red channel, on the back of the, uh, the board. But other than that, this is coming, coming out pretty clear, pretty bright. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll put everything back together and we'll see if it still works. So that's it. Um, we got there in the end. Uh, I would. I don't know if I'd recommend this mod if if you don't want to pull your hair out trying to get it soldered through. Um, but the mod itself is really cool as far as what it does. Um, but yeah, it was a bit of a bitch to get working. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, up by Etim. So if you just look up Etim uh, N64 RGB, and I. I double checked and I got my kit my kit from oldschoolconsoles.co.uk. Um but yeah if you feel like giving it a bash, that's where you get your stuff. Um but yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it. Um I still think the the cabling's a little bit weird, but yeah, what are you gonna do? People have more skill than me anyway, so they're you know, if you've got the skill you you can do it. So yeah. Um have a good one and uh if there's anything else just let me know.